You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Um, but, but you know what I mean. I mean, it's, this sounds so... You know, it's funny because... Extraordinary when we think about it, because it's the way the world is. So... Or might be. Is it really true that what we see is all that's there? Or is it a case where we're just not physiologically designed to experience or see those dimensions, but we'll eventually find evidence of them? Is there something else out there? Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean you're a scientist the, who are exploring these kind of things. The three spatial dimensions right. that we know about, left, right, forward, backward, up, down, yeah. and time. I can understand space and I can understand time. Right. But right. I can't understand what might be next. Are we months, years away from understanding the that's next a, dimensions? That's a really great question. It turns out that there will be an accelerator. So an accelerated particle accelerator right. accelerates right. protons to enormously high energy. And there's going to be a new one that turns on. It turns on in 2007, but really will begin operation in 2008. It's called the Large Hadron Collider, yeah. the LHC. It's going to be at an accelerator facility called CERN, near Geneva. The world's largest the atom smasher. It's a puzzle that's challenged scientists, scholars, and the and It was hailed as one of the most significant scientific experiments in history. Well, now the Large Hadron Collider is getting a new piece of kit. Scientists described it as an upgrade comparable from going from a Morris Minor car to a Formula One car. Physicists believe they have finally found the Higgs boson. The initial discovery of the so-called God particle was first announced last July. The Higgs boson, so far an elusive factor that in theory holds matter together. The collider near Geneva, Switzerland crashed two proton beams into each other at three times more force than ever before. And we are privileged, privileged to witness this this event in it happening right before our eyes. We are in some sense recreating the process of creation itself. I mean, does it lead you to believe that, damn it, it's not even, it's, we're, we're, we're just, we're just a small part of something very big. Just a final thought, because you came up with a lovely line uh, talking to our producer saying, nature is tricky to understand. Every time you peel back a layer, the universe presents you with something else that you don't understand. That's absolutely true. The Large Hadron Collider was uh, designed to replicate conditions seen shortly after the Big Bang. It broke down, though, soon after it was switched on in 2008. But we'd also learned that nature is a real tease. Be <laughs> The title because, of your next book, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> right, Sh that uh, there seem to be all these hints that, that we can put it together into a beautiful package and understand things more deeply, maybe learn about the, the dark matter. The, I hope that the LHC will, will take us beyond. Professor Stephen Hawking say that uh, we might just be around the corner from having a theory of everything. In my experience, that hasn't been the case. Every time we reveal something that we didn't know before, suddenly there are more unanswered questions. And by the way, the next step beyond the Higgs boson is to find dark matter. We know that most of the universe is actually invisible. It keeps the Milky Way galaxy together, in fact. So there's quite a lot of evidence for dark matter. If you look at the way galaxies rotate, they, they don't really fit in a model of the evolution of the universe if there's no dark matter. What's remarkable is you can build a self-consistent model of how the universe has evolved with just one type of dark matter. Uh, human beings like to be more on the control side. Uh, is the possibility of, for example, creating dark matter in the lab. Or then there's the question of why is there more matter than antimatter in the universe? This is really the speciality of the LHCb experiment. Um, at the Big Bang, there should have been equal amounts of matter and antimatter created, and yet there's, there's matter left over, which is good, we're here, it's, it's a good thing, but we don't really understand why. Now they hope the study will bring new insights into the nature of the cosmos and how it all came into being. So we don't understand what, what, what the matter is made of, we know it has to be something beyond what we know, and we don't understand why we are here. And we know that there must be something beyond what we know to explain that we are here. Okay? So 
I think that the LHC um, will uh, for sure shed some light. When people say that it's, it's a leap forward from Morris Minor to Formula One car, are, are they right? Is it of that magnitude? The technology has come on in leaps and bounds, as one would expect, for uh, frontier science. But one thing that really struck me is how much the search for the Higgs boson captured the public's imagination um, to a significant extent, really. I mean, there was journalists from all over the world kind of uh, queuing up to, to report on it. What? This gets to your question of whether this is a special time in history. I think it's a very special time in history. Uh, it's as if uh, we're fish who've uh, suddenly discovered that they live in water. Why do you think that that was the case? I, I don't remember a, a, a scientific event that caught the public's imagination to that level for a very long time. When Jerome Friedman, your former colleague at MIT, I think said that if, uh, if we see evidence of what has been proposed by you, it will be extraordinary, it will shake up everything. <laughs> it's pretty good. That would be pretty good. I mean, it, it's true. I mean, it could be that we need to get to a little bit higher energy to learn more. But right now, we think we will definitely learn something at the energies that we will explore. But there could be even more exotic phenomena, really like higher dimensional. It a, it's a really incremental step. It's not incremental in the sense that it's seven times the energy of current accelerator. So it really is the right energy to probe these questions. It's just that if you get a little bit more energy, you might learn a little more. For example, if you get to even higher energies, you might be able to make higher dimensional black holes if this idea is right. So there are new things that could occur with higher energy. But we expect, we do expect, to be able to know the answers to these questions from the Large Hadron Collider. I don't, just want to clarify. What's likely to be another dimension? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, there are four dimensions. What's, yes. What would be a fifth? What would be well, a sixth? Art makes life worth living. Because via art, I think we can discover beauty. Whereas science makes us live free. Because only with science and applying logic and uh, requiring proof, we can, not, we can be free from swallowing any rubbish propaganda. So I work at CERN. So many years, I never noticed all these things are so beautiful. But I just want to show you some of the pictures here so that you can see how we at CERN took uh, some photos and you look at them and you are emu. <laughs> you are sort of moved because they contain worlds within the simple photographed item. Uh, you can see things that are there from reflection in the grass. You can see a ladder that goes to heaven. There is such a majority of devotion to the projects that it's sort of subliminacion de la de l'environnement. So you can see several of them where you, you have the impression that it's like the end of the world as we know it. LINAC 2 dates back to the 1970s, so the technology that's been used for LINAC 4 is considerably more advanced. Uh, it allows you to control those proton beams much more precisely and uh, uh, also gives you control over m a much greater quantities of protons, which is what you need for investigating the, the experiments that they have on the Large Hadron Collider. Where we're exploring the mysteries of matter. Now, the LHC is a particle accelerator. It's the largest, highest energy particle accelerator in the world. We're talking about a machine that'll take us right to the, the beginning of time itself. There will be people who try to piece out from it what were the different, they'll test the different ideas. So lots of people have suggested what might be there. But generally, they're going to look for energetic particles. They're going to see where did they come from, what could have been, what, what was producing whatever they found.
Because when you're talking about a technology like this or about geoengineering, this is something where even beginning to do the work in the laboratory means you are making a decision that could affect people outside the laboratory. And if you do that work behind closed doors and make no mistake, virtually all of science is kept secret from everybody until the moment of publication because the incentive system is set up such that if you tell somebody else your genius idea, some other lab is going to go off and do it, rush it, publish first, they get all the credit, you get none. This is an insane way to set up your scientific system. No one in their right mind building it from scratch would say we should do it this way. And yet we do, because that's the way it al we have always done it. It never worked great even before the cost of sharing information went to zero. But if you want to engage with a community, how can you do that if you're only telling them what the technology is when you've already gotten it working? Then it's too late. Then you're going to the FDA for regulatory approval. You get the public comment period. But no matter what people say, you can't do anything. It's too late. Done. Finished product. 